Last time on Edgeworth Investigation. But instead, we've only uncovered more questions that need to be answered. I don't know. Oh my shit. Hey guys, right in here and welcome back to... It's Journey Investigations. I almost just forgot the name of the game. That's good. <laughs> Uh, by the way, thank you for all the nice comments, uh, last episode. It wasn't just to make myself feel better that I asked that question. It was just out of curiosity because I didn't know the answer. And you guys gave me some pretty straightforward and nice answers, so thank you. But anyways, let's get on with this. I think we're gonna be able to finish this case up within this episode, hopefully. Uh, seems like we've been on it for quite a while, so I can only assume we're near the end. That is if we are. So, let's get started. I came back to the hideout long after the other two. By that time, Lance had already subdued and restrained Mr. Deacon. He had tied Mr. Deacon securely to the beam in the next room. The, wait, the next- the room next door. After that, the two of us put on our costumes and made our escape. That's believable so far. So Mr. Deacon must have escaped after the two of you left, right? We thought that I'd attract too much attention if we left together, so I left first. We planned to meet up again at the stage in the stadium. But then, as I was walking through the park, I got a call from Lance on my phone. Oliver managed to escape. It looked like he was waiting until I was alone. He also stole the gun from me at that time. And then the murder happened. Mr. Deacon must have overheard their plan to meet up at the stage. Well, Mr. Prosecutor, Miss Pop saw the victim with her own eyes. Which means that the victim was still alive at that time, wouldn't you agree? Why does that sound wrong to me? Because everything sounds wrong to you, Edgeworth. There must be something amiss about this, about this account. Let's see what happens when I examine it in more detail. So, I'm still having quite a hard time liking Lang, mainly because a lot of the other prosecutors, they are they are just as in well, I guess they're not prosecutors in this case. A lot of the other rivals or main opponents, they are always one step ahead of you, or they are always smarter than you, but this is the first one where Lang doesn't really care about how the case is going. Although he seems to have taken a sudden interest in the direction that it's heading. But for the most part, he just wants to get out of here. I came back to the hideout long after the other two. Yeah, let's just start pressing, okay? Sounds good. What exactly did you arrive back at the hideout? It was after we had picked up the ransom money. And where did, were you up until the time where you returned? I was scouting the park out and making preparations for our escape. I walked around in the various areas looking for the best route. Ah, so each of them had their own roles to play. After I was done, I went back to the hideout. By that time, Lance had already subdued and restrained Mr. Deacon. This one might be the wrong statement. How did Lance look at that time? He, well, he looked shocked. He also looked a little down when I saw that sadness in his eyes, I... Thank you, that's enough for now with your ooey gooey mushy shit. And what of Mr. Deacon? What was his situation like? He tied Mr. Deacon securely to the beam in the room next door. Hold it. You are sure that it was Mr. Deacon you saw? Yes, I am certain of what I saw. Did you go into the other room to check? Lance said that it was best if I didn't get too close to him. Oh, I get what happened. That's why the, um... That's why the helmet for the... Or the costume headpiece for the blue badger was right next to Edgeworth. He tied Edgeworth to the pole and then put the hell... Put the thing on him. And then was like, hey, he's right here. And then she's like, oh, okay. Lance, he's such a kind soul. Now, are you telling me that you did not confirm that it was Mr. Deacon for yourself? I checked through the slit in the door that separates the two rooms. 
he had a big... Yeah, okay. He had a bad badger's head on, so I'm absolutely sure. That just had to be Mr. Deacon. She saw a bad badger head. Okay, I already know the answer to this. Whoop, whoop. Miss Pops, the person you saw was not Mr. Deacon at all. Huh? The person you saw was actually this person. <laughs> it was Kay all along. She's the culprit. Miles Edgeworth, the eighth. Wow, Mr. Edgeworth, I didn't know there were many more of you. Well, I can add as many numbers as I want. It was me, Edgeworth. Huh? The person I saw was you, Mr. Edgeworth? I always thought that it was a bit odd. Why would the kidnappers abduct me even after I had handed over the ransom? It's not as though I saw the face of the kidnappers. If I were them, I would have just taken the million dollars and ran. But in the end, there was a point to it all. It was to make me look like Mr. Deacon. Ah, I see. And if that was the reason for which I was abducted, then I believe we can assume that the victim was already dead at that time. Well, Lance, am I right? Uh, that, that's... You showed Miss Pops a person, namely me, with a bad badger's head on. And then made your costumes escape together, so you pretended. Huh? What do you mean by pretended? Oh, by the way, you guys, uh... You guys told me this, and I can't believe I kind of skipped over it. You can check all their ages in here. Wow, K's 17? I, I guess. I don't know, she looked younger than that to me, especially since she acts a lot younger than 17. <laughs> I can't even tell that you're a female if it wasn't for the rest of your body. I feel like she is the actual threat. And that he is nothing. Like, he's not capable of his own post, and she's behind it all. Wait, how old is Emma here? She's 18. Okay. <laughs> Age, question mark. Let, let me fix that really quick. Older than time itself. An old god, do not mess with. <laughs> exactly that. I believe Lance watched you escape and then doubled back to the hideout. Probably to come and remove the bad badger head from my unconscious self. Oh, he's just freaking out over there. And to create his fake prison with the prop sword, he then escaped via the passageway. Not so fast. What? Wait, why are you- why are you hugging his arm? What? Why are you touching me? Get off of me! But <laughs> I'm scared! Hold your tongue, boy. Seriously, it looks like he's hanging on to his arm like, Lang, Lang, save me. Don't get caught up in that tidal wave of words coming out of Mr. Prosecutor's mouth. Tidal wave? We've heard a lot come out of you, but I've yet to see a shred of evidence. The victim's betrayal and his subsequent detainment. All of that could have happened while you were out cold. Th that's right! While well, you were... Wait, you were out for quite a while, Mr. Prosecutor. Even if that were the case, Miss Pops would have still seen me tied to that beam. I, I was so scared of Mr. Deacon, so I didn't go into the next room. So I really have no idea if you were in there or not, Mr. Edgeworth. You see... It would seem that you can't prove a thing. <laughs> Wait, what? I didn't I didn't actually see the text that was said, I just saw the screen flash. Who said that? Oh, it's him. Please wait. Mr. Amano. Oh, ho oh, oh, Miles, my boy. It looks like you're really giving it your all. And Lance, it's not good to cause trouble for others. <laughs> To Dad? Daddy? Let's see, you're the one in charge of the investigate. Is he gonna attempt to bribe him? Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry that my son has been nothing but trouble. This probably won't make up for anything, but I have some evidence for you. Oh, evidence, not a bribe, okay. Oh, do you now? Can, can we get that thing out of here? I, I don't care, he's gu- okay. You know what? I'll, I, Edgeworth, will take the blame. Just get that thing away from me. <laughs> is that what I think it is? 
It's the Bad Badger costume the victim was wearing and a gun. I couldn't wait around for the police, so I just went and found these myself. It appears that they were disposed of in the sea. Ugh. Is there, n <laughs> is there no one in this country who actually obeys the laws? There, there. Now. <laughs> Agent Lang, please calm down. Hmm, what the heck is that scrap of paper? This appears to be a letter from the chief of police. Please allow Mr. Amano complete freedom to do as he sees fit, it says. Ah! The chief of police? What the? Just who does he think he is? The person who wields the highest authority in this area. Oh, 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 there, there, now. <laughs> there is no need to be so upset. <laughs> I'm not a cop from this land. So I'm not bound by the laws of your country. Now, now, now. This wasn't meant to strong arm you into anything, it's just a request. I'm only asking that you please respect the laws of the land. Ugh, I can't really say no to that. However, returning to the topic at hand. It doesn't matter who found the evidence, its value remains unchanged. Alright now, let's take a look at this new evidence. I've already got the results back. I had a special forensics research lab that I'm on good terms with conduct the tests. They verified that the blood on this costume belonged to Oliver, it's for the gun. The only fingerprints they could find were yours, Lauren. What? You disappoint me, Miles. Can't believe that you... That you would... You would cause my son such stress and heartache. Thank goodness I was able to find the final pieces of evidence. With this, you'll have no reason left to push my poor boy around. That's it. These are the case-making pieces of the evidence? Ha, huh, I'll be the judge of that. I just want to see the, um... Like, the cut-in. It shows Edward's face, and then the cut-in of the decapitated Badger face. I will beat you, Badger. Our final duel to the death. Phoenix is not my rival, it is you! I won't rest until I've expressed... Okay, let's look. Whoa, what is that? Hmm, what's this? Looks like there's something inside the costume head. Hey, that sparkle, I bet they're really valu- Oh wait, that's Kay saying that. I bet they're really valuable. Oh, that's part of the mirror, isn't it? Sorry, but they're just pieces of a mirror. But why are they here? I actually don't know the answer to that either. There's nothing unusual about this area. It's just a gun. This gun- Could this gun be the actual murder weapon? Revolver data. Jot it down in organizer. Um, oh, a bullet hole. This bullet hole it looks kind of burn around the edges. Wait, those burn marks were left by g the gunpowder. This is the most important fact. Why is that? <laughs> because it is proof that the victim was shot at point blank range. I guess? Well, are these not the most de definitive pieces of evidence you've ever seen? Thank you, Dad. This should be enough to convince even Mr. Edgeworth over there. Oh. <laughs> We're still gonna have him testify, huh? Make no mistake, there are fingerprints on that murderous gun. And they pro- Ooh, I like this song. I like it a lot. And they proved that it was Lolly who killed Oliver. But Oliver was also after Lolly's life. So, Mr. Edgeworth, even you must see that Lolly was only acting in self-defense. Fingerprints on the weapon, huh? Oh no, this isn't helpful at all! I don't know why I just did that in an f voice. Look, Mr. Edgeworth, all I want to do is save Lolly. But in the end, all I can do is watch on as she takes the punishment for her crimes. That may be all you can do, however... I still have a case to solve and a job to do. The job of unraveling your insidious lie. You wound me. Why, don't, why won't you believe me, even in the face of all this evidence? 
Because I've seen fake evidence before, isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Are there? Those fingerprints, are you sure they belong to Miss Pops? There's no mistake about it. Through my connections, I had the best forensics techniques money can buy performed. Yeah, it doesn't sound very, uh, trustworthy. Having a random person on the scene hire a forensics team you've never heard of and believing in him. I found that to be quite peculiar. What? Are you trying to pick an argument with me? <laughs> yes, I'm trying to fight you in hand-to-hand -hand combat, old man. I learned CQC back in the day. Raise an objection. Frankly, I don't believe that Miss Pomp's print should be on that gun to begin with. And the reason why Miss Pomp's print should not be on that gun is... I don't know, I didn't think this through. Come on, Edgeworth, I'm just winging it. Well, because she's holding it with the suit, isn't she? Why in the hell would her fingerprints be all over that gun? I feel like this is the answer, but I'm not sure, but we're gonna go with it. Probably wrong. Nope, I'm super duper wrong. With this piece of evidence, I'm wrong. W which piece is that? Look here, this is what I speak of. <laughs> Your logic is so hard to follow, you should provide a map. Eh. Yeah, this isn't really our best day, is it, Mr. Edgeworth? You know what, maybe it wants me to present the costume itself, which would make more sense. Hold it. Because that would make more sense than just presenting the missing gun. I'm sorry, I just saw the hand next to the gun and I was like, oh, that should be the thing. So let's try the actual costumes. I'm surprised I haven't lost at this game yet, but we're getting real close. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, because they were wearing costumes at the time, so they wouldn't get fingerprints on them. It's simply not possible for Miss Pomps to have left any prints on that murder weapon. Because while she was at the stadium, Miss Pomps was wearing a costume. Huh? But there's been no mistake, we found fingerprints. Well, Miss Pomps, do you remember touching the gun at all at any time? Ah, uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I did hold it for a bit back in the hideout. I handed it off to Mr. Deacon when he, when he and Lance left for the haunted house. To retrieve the ransom money, I suppose. And there you have it. That is when Miss Pop's prints found their way onto the gun. Urgh. Do you understand now, Mr. Romano? The fingerprints do nothing to prove that Miss Pops isn't the murderer. But you still don't have anything to prove that she isn't the killer, right? Wow, that's some A plus logic there, rich boy. You seem very adamant about insisting that your girlfriend is a cold blooded killer. Oh, Lance. What? No way, I'm incredibly worried about her. But that doesn't change the fact that you don't have any evidence, right? Hm. That's where you're wrong. I have THE evidence. <laughs> I don't know why that line's so funny to me. What? How? The story that Miss Pops killed- wait, the story that Miss Pops killed the victim at the stage in the stadium. The whole affair is simply not true because that was not the real crime scene, but a setup. This proves that the real murder was not committed at the stadium at all. The bro- uh, the mirror fragments, right? Well, there's no bullet hole in the mirror, but... I feel like this is what we're going to have to go for, because I can't think of anything else on the list. Please, be right! Please! Or is it... Huh, or is it the thing we just discovered like two seconds ago. Oh, I just clicked on the wrong screen. Hopefully it doesn't mess anything up. Because it wouldn't be the head, it would be his costume, but I don't see it anywhere. Oh my god, I just skipped over it like eight times. This is those moments where you're staring at the screen and you're like, Zeno, it's right there. Zeno, please, please, it's right there. And I'm just sitting here like, what? Don't see it. Guess it's not there. <laughs> Let's take another good look at the costume the victim was wearing. Then I believe you will see why I insist he was not shot at the stadium. Yeah, at first I was thinking it could be the mirror fragments, but that wouldn't make any sense due to the fact that there's no bullet hole in the mirror. 
This part of the costume proves it. Oh, the bullet hole. Yeah, there we go. Burp, burp, burp. Let me aim. Come on. There we go. Perfect. 10 out of 10 aiming. The burn around this bullet hole was made when the victim was shot at point blank range. Ah, uh, so then you mean the murder Miss Oldback saw at the stadium really was... Yes, she saw two people, but they were separated by a distance. If the victim was indeed shot from below the, st the stage, there shouldn't be a gunpowder burn. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, Mr. Smarty Pants Prosecutor, doing your job and shit. What a loser. Since you seem to know all the answers, why not tell us where the real crime scene is then? Oh, my, my theme is playing. I can't get it wrong now. Lance set me up to look like Mr. Deacon back at the uh, back at the hideout. If that's the case, then the murder must have happened prior to that. And the location where Lance and the victim were at just before I was imprisoned was... Oh, yeah, in the Haunted Mansion, wasn't it? The real location in which Mr. Deacon was killed is here. Haunted house. Take that. I think it's not unreasonable to assume the murder took place in the haunted house. The haunted house? We haven't even talked about that like the entire investigation. <laughs> yes, and I have proof that it is highly likely that the victim was killed there. What proves that the real scene of the crime... Wait, what proves that the real scene of the crime was the haunted house? Uh, the mirror shards. Because that glass mirror actually belongs in the haunted house. Ah, uh, I get it. Take that. This is where this evidence goes. These were inside the costume the victim was wearing. They're fragments of a mirror. A mirror? What does that have to do with anything? Indeed, you don't exactly expect to find pieces of a mirror inside a costume. Yeah, that's actually pretty dangerous. <laughs> However, there is one piece I can think of, well, there's one place I can think of where there is a plethora of Mio fragments. And that is the haunted house. Lance Amano, I propose that you killed Mr. Deacon with the revolver in the haunted house. After that, you stole the blue badger mobile to move his body to the wild, wild west area. The timing of when the blue badger mobile was stolen confirms this as a fact. Miles, my boy, say no more! I'm sorry, Mr. Amano, but I cannot do that. Be quiet. Yes, please, do something. Stop that boy from speaking any more nonsense. Ernest Amano, correct? I meant you. Now be quiet, Gramps. H how dare you? I look at all this money I'm holding. I don't need words. The only thing I require is evidence. And to call these mirror bits decisive is a bit too presumptuous, Mr. Prosecutor. What? Sheena, wasn't there a mirror in the kidnapper's hideout? Yes, there was a mirror there. A mirror that's for the haunted house. You see? Isn't it possible that the fragments got into the costume there? But Agent Lang, there were no fragments on the floor, so it's prob so it's the so the probability is very low. Probability. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? Two seconds ago, literally almost the entire section you've been going, well, the probability of that is low. The evidence isn't decisive enough. And now that I use the term probability, you're like, wow, probability doesn't mean anything because it's not cold hard fact. Like, come on. Makes sense. Langsy says... On truth's path, the word probability does not exist. The only thing that does is definitive proof. The question, Mr. Prosecutor, is do you have the definitive proof you need? Oh, Mr. Edgeworth, do you? I don't know, I don't know shit. Do I have sole evidence that proves the murder took place at the haunted house? The answer is no. Wow, I'm surprised you didn't give us a choice there. <laughs> I was so ready to mess that up, but I actually would have chosen no. See? So since you don't have any- Shut up. <laughs> I don't have the evidence yet, but... I'm certain the murder occurred around the time I turned the ransom over. 
At that time, the only two, or the only people at the haunted house besides myself, were Lance and Mr. Deacon. If I can prove that the murder took place at the haunted house, and I can prove Lance's guilt in connection, I can prove Lance's guilt in connection to the murder. Murder! It's been a while since I've gotten to say that because Trucy hasn't been on screen. Although I doubt she will even show up ever again until I play one of the 3DS games. <laughs> What? But now, Mr. Edgeworth? Agent Lang, I have a special request. Yeah? I'd like to prove to you that the scene of the crime was indeed the haunted house. Why in the world are you asking the werewolf for permission? Because I don't really have a choice if I want to find the truth. Alright, permission granted, but you're not to touch a single thing, got it? It won't be a problem. All that's important to me is that the truth be brought to light. Doesn't matter by who or how it's done, as long as it is. Ugh. God damn it, he's so cool, it pisses me off. Sheena. I'm here. <laughs> I'm literally two feet away, you can stop screaming in my ear. Oh my god, I think I'm deaf in my left ear. Put in the paperwork for the authorization immediately. Understood. I'll go get the Gatewater Group's approval. Hold it. Who was that? Now, now. Let's hold on for a second. There's no need to obtain approval. Mr. Amano? Agent Lang, if you'd please take a look at this. What is this? Sheena, read it for me. I can't read this shit. It's the deed to the haunted house. The deed? Read it out loud. Gatewaterland, Incorporated hereby bequeaths the property unknown, or known as the Haunted House, to Mr. Amano for the lump sum of one million, paid in full cash. What? <laughs> oh, 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 as you can see, I'm now the legal owner of the haunt. Did he buy this while we were talking or beforehand? Are you kidding? When did you- I ran to the owner of the park earlier and we made the deal almost immediately. How quickly things move when you can prepare a million dollars in the blink of an eye. That- that one million you paid? Don't tell me it was. Oh, that's right. This disgusting suitcase belongs to you, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't have any more use for it, so you may have it back now. Y you use the ransom money? My Lance was a good boy. Even apologized for the kidnapping a bit earlier. So I do believe that I will forgive him after all. He did return the ransom money. That's the way things are, so if you would please discuss things with me from now on. Discuss? What is there to discuss? Well, I permission to enter the haunted house, of course. I knew you'd pull this shit. <laughs> Ugh. When we were busy listening to Lance's story, Mr. Amano was out there preempt preempting us. Permission to- to- whoa. Permission to search the haunted house is denied. End of discussion. Agent Lang, I want you to arrest that girl. And Miles, you should hurry on home now, my boy, before I really lose my temper. I don't know why I gave him such a deep voice. I thought he had like more of just like a regular old man voice before. It's becoming closer to the judge's voice. Ah, Mr. Amano definitely has the deck stacked in his favor here. What should I do? If I leave it like this, the truth will be lost forever. Honestly, that's not so bad. I could go home and watch, like, Ghostbusters or something. To be continued. I don't know, maybe we won't get it this episode. There's still a lot of stuff left to do, but... Oh, wow, we're just right back here. Okay. If I can't get permission to investigate the crime scene, then the truth will be lost. Hold it, hold it, hold it! Okay. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you doing spacing out? Have you forgotten? There's only one thing you should do at a time like this. Shoot them? What is that? When people are in a bind, the Hero of Justice appears to save the day. But the Steel Samurai isn't here right now. Look, you just leave it to me. For I am K. Farday, the second. Yeah, it's uh, I. I can't decide how to pronounce your name. I think it's supposed to be um, 
Faraday? Faraday? I don't know. You guys said it before, but I've already forgotten. Bad memory. The second of the great Yatagrasu. What does the Yatagrasu mean? I feel like that's a uh, Japanese folklore or something, or like a folk tale. I feel like I've heard it before. But I thought you were a thief, not a hero. Yatagrasu is noble, and it's always a thief of justice. That's... of course. If we have enough information, I can recreate the inside of the haunted house with this. Plus, if we then factor in everyone's testimony, you can recreate exactly what happened when I dropped off the ransom money. We may be able to figure out some new information through this. It's worth a try. Agent Lang. Ah, so you want to use your little toy, be my guest. Literally, like, what's he gonna do? No, you can't use a hologram. How dare you? Get that out of here. <laughs> You're obstructing my view. You're obstructing my way. I can't walk through the hologram. Okay, hang on. You're all about to witness the true power of the real modern-day Robin Hood. Detective Gumshoe. I, I completely forgot he was even here. Is there a copy of the haunted house's blueprint among the police reference documents? Yes, sir. We got it just in case we needed it for the kidnapping case. Alright, I'll input the haunted house data then. And... Oh shit, this is Disneyland. Screwed it up, never mind. I guess, Edgeworth, let's just go home. <laughs> what, what, what is this? Where are we? It's... it's like we're inside the haunted house. Even if we can't inspect the real location itself, the path to the truth slumbers here. If I can successfully navigate my way using logic, I'll ultimately arrive at the truth. Now then, I believe I'm ready to investigate the crime scene. Okay, what should I recreate first? You haven't figured it out yet. Heh, <laughs> maybe I have, maybe I haven't. But I'm going to make you do all the hard work. <laughs> Very well. I'd like to inspect the moment in which I was ambushed by the abductor. The abductor? I make it sound like a Dark Souls boss. <laughs> the moment the pursuer came up behind me and stabbed me through the back and I lost all of my health and I respawned at the bonfire back home. If I can verify that, it may provide me with a new lead. I had just come out into the hallway after leaving the money inside the dining room. At that time, I saw a badger slumped over on the floor at the end of the hall. It was the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. Eh? What was the, what was a badger doing all the way down there? I also thought it strange. However, I thought that maybe it was simply a mannequin that was set there for atmosphere. Do you know which badger it was? No, it was too dark to tell. All I saw was its silhouette. Hmm. In that case, I guess I'll just program a badger silhouette for in for now. Oh, that's the Edgeworth hologram. Damn, I'm sexy! You doing anything tonight, Edgeworth? No, Edgeworth, I'm not doing anything tonight. See you at nine. Yes, yeah, see you at nine, me. Both Edgeworths just start making out ferociously. Uh, we're, we're still here, sir. We're still here. I know you're still here. <laughs> oh, what is this? Then I started walking towards the exit. And that's when you were struck from behind, right? Wow, that's... How in the hell did that badger run all the way down the hallway? and hit Edgeworth in the back of the head without him hearing a footstep. And then again, I guess that's probably the revelation of this case, is that the Badger came out of one of those side rooms, or was hiding in the dining room the whole time. And that Badger back there is actually just a decoy. Yes. But that's odd. The hallway is a dead end. Where did your assailant come from? There's only one location I can think of. I believe my assailant was lying in wait here. Duh, he was the blue badger costume. Like, he could have been in- are, are these supposed- no, these aren't doors, these are like bookcases or something. Bookshelves. Take that. that doll I saw wasn't really a doll. It was, in fact, a costume kidnapper. Oh, so he used the costume as the perfect camouflage to blend in with the rest of the house. 
precisely. He waited until I had made the drop-off and was about to leave. Then, just as he saw me take the step towards the exit, he stood and launched his attack. Can think of no better hiding place than this. Hey, not bad, I'm beginning to think that I should steal this tactic for myself. Just don't use it to do anything criminal, okay? <laughs> it doesn't look so bad when it's just a hologram, it just looks like an overgrown chow. Well, Lance? What, what? What? What are you asking me for? As one of the kidnappers, I figured I should give you the chance to confess first. <laughs> I was one of the kidnappers, but, but I don't know anything. I did come up to the haunted house, but I never set foot inside. I left Oliver in charge of picking up the ransom money. He didn't set foot inside. Is he telling the truth, or is this another lie? Alright then, you're claiming that it was Mr. Deacon who assaulted me. Yes, I'm sure it was him. Okay, and putting the new info now. Mr. Deacon was the Bad Badger, right? <laughs> Since the Bad Badger has a gun attached to his right hand... I'll have to change it so the weapon in its left is in its left hand. Now to verify the facts of this recreation. Begin investigation! Oh god, don't make me talk to every single person here. Sheena, talk to me. Are you gonna say anything worthwhile? I have no obligation to talk to you. Well, I'm fine with just Little Thief solving this in case. That toy, it's very well made. Haha, -ha, that's because it's the heart of the Noble Thief, Yatagrasu. Okay, that may not be something you want to advertise to everyone. So, Sheena, what exactly is the source of this extra-dimensional-like space? I don't know, it's magic-y shit. I believe this is nothing more than a projection from that girl's toy. So it's all an illusion, right? Yes. Hey, don't treat this like some sort of silly light show. Alright, well, time to look at Badger here. You didn't recreate the weapon. Well, I can't exactly recreate something I know nothing about. So tell me, what were you hit with? The attack came from behind, so I have no idea. But I doubt it was someone's bare hands. Hmm, okay, then where were you hit? I was hit on the right side of my head, just above my temple. There was a bit of blood, but it wasn't anything serious. Ouch, sounds painful. Why are you smirking like that when you say it? It's just your imagination. Now let's see. <laughs> Secretly, I like to watch Edgeworth almost die. I wonder if there's anything in the hallway that could have been used as a weapon. Huh, I wonder. It's like there's a giant sword here that has an attachment to the rest of the case. Hmm. I wonder. Take that. I have it. There was indeed one such object lying here in this hallway. A prop sword. Are you talking about this thing here? Yes, although we did find it at the kidnapper's hideout. Wait, yes, it's possible that the culprit took it with him after using it on me. To leave no evidence behind, right? Correct. Maybe worth more examin or a more thorough examination yet. Okay, so what test do you want to run on the sword? Test with luminal dust for prints. Isn't that the same thing? Well, you can never go wrong with good old-fashioned luminol. Copper was wearing a costume at the time, so fingerprint analysis is useless. It's on a luminol test. It's possible that some of my blood found its way onto this. Agent Lang, may I ask for your cooperation in this matter? Hmm. <laughs> like I have a choice, Gina. Call the lab boys. Understood. Emma's just gonna show up, isn't she? Oh, no, guess not. <laughs> I mean, that wouldn't make any sense, but I still want her to show up. Except for a dab on the left side, it would appear that the blade is spotless. So it must have been the left side of the prop sword that hit you then, right? Cool, we found the not murder weapon, assault weapon. Okay, I'll update the recreation with this new piece of info. Two Edgeworths, one Badger. 
Don't search that on Google. I'm sure you'll find something you don't want to see. Or you do want to see. I'm not sure. I'm not responsible for what you find when you search two edgers, one badger. <laughs> I won't press until I've inspected every suspicious nook and cranny. Hmm. What a fine cravat this man wears. Edgeworth, focus on the goddamn Kate. Okay, okay. Okay. Why is your name like that anyway? It doesn't make any sense. You know the bad badger is pretty bad looking when you see him up close. Well, what did you expect from a character named the bad badger? And those sunglasses, wearing them in the dark makes him seem extra bad. Now I'm lost. Which meaning of bad does she really mean? <laughs> Alright, let's deduce something. If I figure out what that button... What? No, not really. I can't think of anything out of the ordinary. It's me. I have to say, it's rather embarrassing to see myself like this. Oh, so what were you thinking about at the time? I don't recall, but I guess I was thinking about the kidnapping. Really? Because I don't think so at all. Your face practically just screams I'm about to be conked over the head. <laughs> if I had known that at the time, do you think I would have let myself be hit? <sighs> I can't... I'm just like scooting around in my chair right now. In frustration that I can't figure this out. But, uh, let's see if this works. Or, you know, that makes no sense this revolver, because we have the revolver. It'd be the missing model gun, right? It's in his hand. Uh, how do I do the thing? I did it! I'm a smart. Yes. Oh. oh. My voice just failed me there. <laughs> this here contradicts this piece of evidence. Hmm? You know, I think you're just overthinking it a bit. Uh, maybe I wasn't thorough enough in my explanation. Must remain calm. I was struck in the head in exactly the way this recreation portrays. I believe that I would go against a certain piece of evidence. I wouldn't go against the sword because the sword was broken in the... Um... Door, or is that what it wants me to point out? The blatantly obvious again. Oh, I think I know what it wants. It just wants something super obvious. That doesn't make any sense! We already... <sighs> okay. I'm just gonna go by your logic game. If this is the answer, I'm gonna be so upset. I am so upset. That is not a Eureka, Edgeworth. That's a failure. You're a living failure with a triple cravat. You don't deserve it. I'm taking away two of your cravats. Finally, I found a clear contradiction of facts about this sword. Except for a bit on the left side, this prop sword is absolutely spotless. However, if the culprit had used his left hand, the blood would be on the opposite side. The opposite side? Huh. If the culprit held the sword in his right hand, then the sword's right side would hit. I see, but the blood was on the left side of the sword, right? Oh, that's what we're comparing it to. Wait a minute, hold on. Wait, what? Sorry, I'm trying to figure this out because... I mean, the sword guard doesn't look like it can only be held from one way. But at the same time, it looks like you could equally hold the sword in both the right and left hand. I mean, aside from the fact that that's a somewhat practical fantasy sword, this deduction makes no sense, because you could easily toss hands between whichever one you want. But then again, I guess the badger costume does not have the thinnest hands, making it so that you'd have to use the sword from the intended placement, or hand placement. Which means that he used his right hand to hit you. Exactly. The prop sword has a large handguard attached to the hilt. It would be impossible to hold it with two hands while wearing a costume with such big hands. Therefore, it couldn't be the left hand or both hands, it must have been the right. I'll change the data to reflect the right-handed swing. Not yet, Kay. There's no sense in changing anything yet. If you change the parameters to the right hand, it'd only create a new contradiction. Changing the prop sword to the culprit's right hand would conflict with what? 
uh, the uh, model gun. There we go. The badger, had o the badger already holds the gun in his right hand, so he can't hold a sword in addition. Hey, that's right. Then what now? If it isn't in his left or his right hand, it means that he was holding it with his mouth. My guts. Guts badger. New badger idea. It means that the one who struck me could not have been the bad badger. Are you paying attention, Lance? Yeah, yeah, I, I got it. Mr. Deacon would not have been the one who struck me. Which leaves only you as our primary suspect. Ugh, fine, it was me, I hit you. It appears that you lied to me yet again, but see how quickly they catch up to you, Lance? Wait, isn't Lance left-handed? Ah, uh, yes, but that's what makes this deception all the more interesting. He used his right hand to make it look like Mr. Deacon had been the one to strike me. For you see, firing a gun with one's non-dominant hand is difficult. No, it's not! <laughs> what? Okay, I'm sorry, but logic is failing me. Swinging a sword in your non-dominant hand, the hand that has less muscle memory and less control and less muscles in general, is harder to do than pulling a trigger. Like, the people who wrote this... I mean, it's Japan, so they have really strict gun laws, but it's like, the people who wrote this game or wrote the Ace Attorney series have never fired a gun in their life. Because some of the things they assume, especially during, um... Oh, what was it? It was the case in Apollo Justice with Lamoir, and it's like, the kickback from this gun is just too large, just... <laughs> That's so stupid, it doesn't make any sense. That level of dexterity isn't required to swing a pro- I want to punch Edgeworth so bad right now. Please draw a picture of Hologram Edgeworth punching himself to make, my, to make me feel better. Just kidding, you're not obligated to do anything. I have enough- I've actually gotten a nice amount of fan art from this series, and I'm really thankful for that. So thank you very much! <laughs> That's what my profile picture is now. Someone drew uh, me as an Ace Journey character. Freaking awesome. Okay, please put this new data. The one who hit me from behind was Lance. Or should I say the Proto Badger? You know what? I was wondering why I thought of the name Proto when I was naming the Proto Priest in Radiant Dawn, and now I just remembered where it came from. Uh, Edgeworth and Radiant Dawn are now becoming one series. This episode will be titled. <laughs> Path of Edgeworth, Radiant Investigation. You got it, here I go. I mean, you just could draw some extra grids here and it'd practically be a Fire Emblem hallway in Radiant Dawn. <laughs> now we have a faithful recreation of the situation around the attack on me. All right, all we have to do is examine the new re recreation and- Not so fast! Not so fast. <laughs> and what exactly is so funny this time? An amusing little gadget. It sure packs a punch, right, Sheena? Yes. It was all I could do to hold my laughter in. Hey, don't make fun of little thief. You mean, you mean old werewolf. He and Mr. Edgeworth bring out the best in each other. <laughs> You've had your little fun, but now it's my turn. I sat quietly by, listening. But the crude conclusions you two keep spewing don't whet this wolf's appetite. There's no guarantee that your toy will always show the real situation at any given time. Thank you for someone bringing this up. All it displays is whatever information you put in there, right? Well, when you put it that way... Your suppositions are wrong. It's not your fault, so I'm going to let you in on this. There's a trick to this haunted house. Oh, it's gonna be like a hidden room or something? And what might that be exactly? Is that what those bookshelves are there for? Like you pull one of the books out of the bookshelf and it opens up a secret room? A trick beyond what your tiny imaginations can produce, Sheena. Here you are. <laughs> oh, I love their dynamic though, even though I don't like laying by himself. I like his design and his personality, but... As a rival, I don't. Their dynamic together is so good. I heard there's a very similar thing in uh, Investigations 2. Although, I heard Investigations 2 isn't translated. But I don't know if there's a patch for that or not. Whatever. 
Now then, what you miss, girly, is written right here in this pamphlet. The Seven Wonders of the Haunted House, The Disappearing Badger. What is this? I'd say that someone around here is fond of theatrics. As you can see, they set a doll down at the end of this hallway for that purpose. Basically, the blue badger you saw was just a stupid doll. How can this be? Guess that throws your whole theory about it being your attacker right out the window. Edward, that wasn't even a sound. But that can't be right. Maybe the culprit hid the doll somewhere. And then he laid down and pretended to be it instead. If the criminal couldn't even hide himself in the hallway, how would he hide a giant doll? Hmm. Do you get it now? Thanks to your presumptions. Your logic started off weak and led you completely to the completely wrong conclusion. Eh. Now get off your high horse. Mr. Hedgeworth, he's yelling at me. Don't you yell at my K. Okay, I wonder if you could please put in the new information for me. You don't know when to quit, do you? I can't quit, not until I can declare that I've found the truth. Agent Lang, for the additional information, you have my thanks. There you go again. Well, see if I care. Lang Sundari confirmed. Okay, I'm uploading, I'm updating the recreation data now. Boop, boop, boop. And... Oh. So there's another one right now, huh? Wait, I saw like a gigantic crease in that wall. Is my dumb theory about there being an extra hidden room actually right? That looks really weird. <laughs> Look at how it changes from the blue badger to into the proto-badger all of a sudden. The son of a badger was just a doll. Where was my attacker hiding? Well, that's what we're going to find out, right? So come on, Mr. Edgeworth, let's go! Yes, let's. This recreation can't be right, which means there must be a contradiction somewhere. Boop, boop, boop. I'm gonna go check for that secret passageway. If I'm right, I'm gonna lose it. Okay, look at this wall. I bet this torch does it, too. This mirror. You take a look around, it almost feels... <laughs> it almost feels more like a house of mirrors. Indeed, who has ever heard of this many mirrors inside of a haunted house before? At least we know this is the real crime scene thanks to these mirror shards. Oh, wow, that actually updated something. Hey, wait, these shards, there's something different about them. Oh? The ones we found earlier are thicker than the shards from these mirrors on this wall. And look, there's some sort of design on the back, too. The pieces from that costume are certainly different from the other mirrors. What does this mean? Could it be that our pieces are not pieces of these mirrors? I actually don't know where this is going. Unrest until- oh god, this is terrifying. I didn't sign up to play like- I don't know. What's a what's a horror 2D horror game? Corpse Party? Yeah, I guess that's one. Um, Higurashi. That's one too. Oh god. I don't even wanna let's examine. This blue badger is just a doll for use in this haunted house. I bet the one who killed this blue badger was the bad badger, right? According to the Blue Badger Bible, it says that they are each other's worst enemy. All because one's an ally of justice and the other's a vile criminal with a gun. Perhaps they were just dis destined, I almost said designed, to battle each other. Much like the Steel Samurai and the Evil Magistrate. <laughs> you guys weren't kidding, I didn't know how much of a nerd Edgeworth still was, but that's awesome. <laughs> uh, I, I can't wait to see, like, Edgeworth just huddled up on his couch watching Steel Samurai and Kay just comes in like, Edgeworth, I got your ma- <laughs> And he just turns around and he's like, you saw nothing. Deduce. Okay. Spot somehow connected. Okay, yeah. Maybe. I'm gonna get this wrong and lose a billion bajillion points, but... This is a complete- Nope, okay. 
Yep. Yep, I'm rolling out of We're gonna run out of health and die. I'm super duper wrong. I'm sorry, Edgeworth. Is it something to do with the, uh, the Bible? Oh, I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> oh, boy. There's something wrong with this scene. That much I know for sure. Or maybe it's just a trick of the eye. No, that can't be it. There's something wrong. It's wrong. The sash is on backwards, isn't it? I think I found it. I cannot believe I found that. I actually know what I'm talking about this time. Eureka! Hold on a second there. There is something wrong with this blue badger. <laughs> huh? Like what? The way the belt is on him is like the opposite of how it should be. Did you make a mistake? That can't be. I inputted the image data exactly as it is in the pamphlet. So then why is the blue badger dressed up in reverse? Uh... Hopefully this doesn't destroy me, but what I want to do is I want to put the mirror shards with the blue badger in reverse. Please be right. Please, I can't afford to lose. Yes. Praise Lord Edgeworth. And Oscar too, I guess. Okay, do you remember what you said earlier? What I said earlier about what? About how this building might as well have been the House of Mirrors. A house of mirrors? Oh, that would explain the reversed or mirror image. Yes, this blue badger might be nothing more than a reflected image of the real one. Then was the blue badger you saw just a reflection? When I looked down this hall, I thought it was perfectly straight. However, if there was a mirror... Oh, that's naughty. It's not just a hidden room, but something else completely... Oh, then it would actually form an L shape, right? Precisely. I was deceived the hallway was almost pitch black. And there was a beam in the way that obstructed my view of the other hallway. Wait, but why build this place like that? It sounds pretty pointless to me. Okay, this house is just another attraction at an amusement park. Everything here is pointless. To be honest, like in real life, I hate amusement parks. There's nothing there for me. They created a mirror wall for a very specific purpose, one I can point out to you. I don't know, Edgeworth. Stop trying to make me know things I don't. This is the reason they built the mirror wall. So they could shoot people. Um... I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I think it would be to display something in reverse, or...? Huh? I don't know. <laughs> this is- this is going well. The only thing I can think of that even has anything to do with it is this. Because we already presented the other piece of evidence. And it's to trick people? Oh, duh like an idiot. It's to pull off this act of the disappearing badger. Where, uh, they position the mirrors so that it disappears and then comes back again or something, correct? Take that! As it's written in the pamphlet, the main draw of this attraction is the mystery of the disappearing badger. You mean they built the mirror for that trick alone? But you said you saw the badger, so it was definitely still there. That's true, at the time, however. Doing this allows someone to make the blue badger disappear in a flash. Move the mirror wall. Move the blue badger. Dim the lamps. I actually don't know the answer to this one. I mean, all of, ref like, reflections are just light. And without light, it's impossible to have a reflection. So I'm gonna go dim the lamps. All they would have to do is dim the lamps. So that's how it's done. If it was completely dark in here, then you wouldn't be able to see the badger anymore. Yeah. Wait, hold on, that's completely pointless. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to see anything at all, not even where you're going. Hmm. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, if it negates the point of the attraction. <laughs> I'd better rethink this. 
Doing this allows someone to- Okay, thank god. It didn't take away points. Move the mirror wall. To remove the- To remove a reflected image, simply move the mirror. First the mirror was con Oh, so there is a secret room, kind of. Okay, so the badger's in there, and then the window- Oh, okay, the mirror flips out. So I was partially right. There's a secret room, but not used in the way that I intended. Uh, first the mirror was constructed so that it could be moved. Then, beyond where the mirror was, an empty hallway had to be created. Oh, so then they wanted people to see the blue badger, they would open... So when they wanted people to see the blue badger, they would open the mirror. And then when they wanted to hide it, they simply had to close it again. This explains why the other side of these fragments have a design on them. Ah, uh, and, and, uh, and if the pattern is the same as the other walls in this hallway, when the mirror when, when the mirror is closed, it would blend in with the rest of the walls. This is the mirror trick that this haunted house employs. And this also proves the existence of a hiding place for the culprit. Huh? How so? Think about it, Kay. There was a place that was outside of my field of vision. The culprit kept out of sight by hiding here. Oh, he just hid back here. There was a very large blind spot, one I could not see beyond, and it was here. I, I honestly would have never figured this out. Edgeworth is just too smart. <laughs> if my assailants hid on the other side of this movable mirror, then you wouldn't be able to see him. He wouldn't even need to do anything to the blue badger doll. Wow, this is a smart attraction. Exactly. All he had to do was wait for me on the other side of the mirror. Wait, hold on. I just thought of something. Yes? Well, shouldn't the mirror wall be broken right now in reality? Hmm, since we have a few shards of it, we can probably assume it is. Yes, I am. It's almost most definitely broken. The question is, when was it broken? Since we found these inside the victim's costume, that would mean that the victim was there when the mirror was broken. Wait, that sound. Leave the money and go, now. Oh, I don't even remember that part. That sound I heard was most definitely the sound of a mirror breaking. Okay, I'd like you to input some new information. Ah, don't scare me like that. <laughs> Sorry, but I need you to recreate something for me. Sure, whatever you need. So, what do you need, anyways? If you could first recreate this hallway just before I enter the dining room. You got it! <laughs> ah, I see. Now this, I believe... This is... Wait... What? Oh no, I'm seeing it right, okay. Alright, I see the reflection now. <laughs> Now this, I believe, this is how it was right before I entered the dining room. Although, at the time, I thought it was a single straight hallway. And then I went inside. It was, this, it was around then that I heard the sound of a mirror shattering. You heard what? Then? Yes, I believe it was then that the mirror was broken. Okay, so then when you stepped outside into the hallway again... The mirror wall should no longer exist, Kay. Please recreate that. Got it. Wait, but with the mirror gone, the culprit lost his hiding spot. So where would he go in his proto-badger suit, Mr. Edgeworth? Oh, that's easy enough. With the mirror gone, he would simply hide himself in the branch hallway. Hmm, I think this about wraps it up. Looks like we finally solved everything. Time for me to do my jumping dance. That's not really dancing. Shut up, Edgeworth. No, not yet. An even larger contradiction has now reared its head. Huh? Perhaps you did not notice. But this recreation contains a very troubling inconsistency. The inconsistency between what I saw and the recreation lies. Um, I don't know. 
<laughs> I really don't know. Uh. Um. Let's see. If he hid in there. Oh, that's right. Because if he hid in there, then he wouldn't be able to get out. I'm having trouble spotting this inconsistency. A lot. I really don't know. So time for guessing. Wow, really? Not in there? Guessing works. <laughs> Remember, kids, when you can't solve so when you can't solve a problem in life, just guess and hope it goes well. Okay, take a look at the end of the hall. Ooh, there's no blue badger there. Exactly. The blue badger that I saw in reality was is not here. This is the final point on this long chain of logic. Yes, Edgeworth. This long chain of perfectly reasonable, not flawed logic. Okay, the last remaining contradiction. It looks like it's coming out of the back of Edgeworth's head. I now have the power to project my thoughts in a physical space. So let me get this straight. When you came out of the dining room, you saw a badger, right? And that is precisely where the final contradiction lies. Why are we back out here again? Why, why didn't we just stay in the haunted house? <laughs> Something that shouldn't exist was there before me. Who or what do you suppose it was? I believe this is the real identity of our mystery badger. Oh, that's where the body was, wasn't it? Take that. The badger I saw was in actual actuality the dead victim's body. What? He looks so surprised, like he was sitting there watching us figure out everything, and he's just like, I don't get it really. Agent Lang, the entirety of my complete logic is my final decisive piece of evidence. The murder happened in the hallway of the haunted house at the time of the drop-off. And you can consider the moment I heard the mirror breaking. To be the real time of death for Mr. Deacon. No! Wait, why is he yelling no? He just finished... We solved the case, isn't that good for you? Maybe it was due to their fighting, or perhaps it was the life-shattering bullet. But no matter what the cause was, the hallway mirror wall was broken. Ha. Huh. You were in the house at that time, right? Or at the time, right? Are you telling me that you missed the sound of a gunshot? Objection! There was a variety of sound effects playing at the time. All for th theatrics, I assume. A gunshot must have blended right in. Ayah! Now then, I'd like you to recall something for me. Who was it that was with the victim at the haunted house? <laughs> who was the one who had the opportunity to rob the victim of his gun and use it on him? <laughs> it was you, Lance Amano. I mean, I knew this for a long time, but it was you now. Ha, huh, guilty, got you, loser. What? Oh, he's just gonna ball his eyes out. I'm sorry. Dude, chill. You just committed murder. Get over it. Everyone does it every once in a while. I do not condone committing murder. Please don't do that. It's not like I had a choice. Oliver turned on me all of a sudden. He snapped and turned violent right after I hung up with you. He shoved me to the ground and straddled me. I fought back as hard as I could, grabbed his gun, and I shot him. The bullet must have went through his body and shattered the mirror. If I hadn't taken his gun and shot him first, I would have been the one you found. He's a hardened criminal. He's escaped from jail. See? That's justified self-defense. My boy was only trying to protect himself. That remains to be seen and will have to be resolved in court. <laughs> I'd love to see some of like, the unsolved court cases show up in... Uh, like the 3DS Ace Attorney games, but um, I don't think that could happen because there's already too much decisive evidence that that would be quite a hard argument to make. Agent Lang, I leave the rest to you. Huh, as if you were the one in charge around here. Guys, arrest these two and get them out of my sight. 
Wait, wait, wait. I had nothing to do with the murder. The only person you should be arresting is Lance. D dad what? Wait, what? Did you, just, did you stub your toe or something? Dude, just get up. Get over it. Sorry, but you're not slipping away that easily, Mr. Ernest Amano. You tampered with the evidence that you could cover for your son. What a great dad you are, willing to risk it all. Tr truly touching. Urgh. By the way... Do you know why I'm really here? How could I possibly know the answer to such an asinine question? You wound me. I came all this way from across the sea just to see you, you know. You came to see me? What's that supposed to mean? I have a few things to ask you, Mr. Amano, about a case from ten years ago. A case from ten years ago? Oh, what's the name that you use here for that case? Sheena! It's known as the KG-8 Incident. The KG-8 Incident? Oh, so you remember it. Good, then you'll recall that the trigger in that case was the Amano Group Scandal. Specifically, the charge of an international smuggling ring. Smuggling, there's that word again. At the time, the person that was arrested as the ringleader was Mr. Amano's very own secretary, Mr. Colin Deveret. Oh, so that's why he was in jail. A oh, father! Even though you pushed the crime onto your then-secretary, Mr. Deveret, I always suspected that you were involved in the smuggling ring, Mr. Amano. Mr. Deveret was arrested in place of you. Which is why, he, when he broke out, you hit him from the police, right? You hit him in exchange for his silence on your dirty little secret. Now, 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 now! <laughs> Please calm down. I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Pretend to be ignorant all you want. We're taking you down to the precinct. Precinct. Anyways, for a nice, long chat. Licks his face. This is the taste of a liar, Ernest Amano. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. Bad reference. What the? Who the heck was that? Wait, I didn't see anything. <gasps> you're... Wait, you... He's dead! What? But he... You're dead. You're super dead and you're still alive and still super duper twirly, man. Okay. I'll take him down to the precinct if you don't mind. And who the heck are you? I'm Jack Keyes Portman. Portsman. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. <laughs> and I'm a prosecutor in charge of this case. Oh, Jack Keyes, thank goodness you're here. Don't jerk me around. This is an Interpol case, so keep your paws off my suspect. Sorry, but I can't comply. I've got the backing of the prosecutor's office. See, in this country, we prosecutors work with the police to bring cases to court. <laughs> so if you would please cooperate with me here, that'd be great. Now, now, how about a handshake to seal the deal? Sorry, but I hate prosecutors, the whole lot of you. Guys, arrest these two suspects. Sir! Oh, I almost forgot. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, is it? I'd like to thank you. Thank me? Yeah, for working so hard to fulfill my goal. Hey, is that any way to thank someone? And what the heck is that supposed to mean? You were so relentless with Lance that you forced Ernest to tamper with the evidence. Thanks to that, I finally had a legitimate reason to arrest him. So how does it feel to bite the hand that feeds you? The hand that feeds me? I'm not sure I follow. Hey, it's no use pretending with me. You're the one, right? You're the corrupt prosecutor that's working with mi for Mr. Amano in the smuggling ring, right? No, I would never do such a thing. Tch, what the heck? Our intel's never wrong. Your prosecutor's office, there's definitely someone working in wi working with the ring. Ah, uh, so Agent Lang suspected my relation to Mr. Amano. That must be the real reason behind his antagonistic attitude. 
On top of that, your mentor was Manfred von Karma, right? Sadly, yes. There were non-stop rumors flying around about forged evidence with that guy. You're not twisting the truth behind those closed courtroom doors too, are you? A courtroom is a place where the truth is revealed. <laughs> well, don't worry, it's not only you, it's the whole lot of you that can't be trusted. A prosecutor who never lost in 40 years, every defendant must be found guilty. Fueled by those ideas, is it any wonder that courts produce nothing but falsities and lies? It would seem that his disdain extends beyond just me. Prosecutors at the courts, why is this man so angry with us all? Rest assured, the next time we meet, I won't be so forgiving. <laughs> oh, that's freaking awesome! So don't you forget it. To protect the world from devastation. To unite all people within our nation. Lance. Sheena. Lance. Lance Amano. God damn it. <laughs> Wrong name. I messed it up. Sorry. Agent Sheena. Why does Agent Lang hate all prosecutors so? Lang is the head of the long-honored House of Lang in Zhang Fa. The head of all police-related divisions in that country were of Lang blood. Were? What do you mean by that? Aren't they still? They were revered, but that was long ago. They don't hold that sort of sway anymore. And it was all because of the courts. How can that be? A prosecutor once withheld and tampered with the evidence one of Lang's detectives found. And, wait, that evidence purity was tarnished and cost the Lang family its honor and trust. But, not all prosecutors are like that. Even so, Lang will never respect the court again, or any prosecutor. So Asian Lang is a man who hates all courts and is unwilling to forgive prosecutors. Man, what a piece of work that guy is. Come on, Jim, we better catch up. Yeah. You still got to deliver that thing to the old man, after all. Are we not gonna go over the fact that the guy from the first case is still alive? Did I forget something? I mean, I've been playing this for a long time, but... How long has it been? How is he out of jail? I thought that guy right there was the murder victim. Are we ignoring this? What? I'm sorry, I'm super confused right now, and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be, or it's just been so long since I played that very forgettable intro that... I don't know anything anymore. Detective Gumshoe, I believe it's time we wrapped up and headed our and headed home ourselves. Yeah, are you going home too, Mr. Edgeworth? No, I've done nothing but be entangled in one mess after another since my return. It's all right with you. Can you drop me off in my office? No problem, sir. Um, excuse me. Yes, what is it? Um, I... That is... Thank you very much. Aw, oh, it's okay. No need for you to thank me, pal. Just doing my job as a detective. I guess I was fooled pretty badly, my Lance. A oh, cruel fate. What's a woman to do when she's been hurt by the one she loves? I don't know, murder someone. That seems to be the option in this universe. And to think I never realized my father was right there. And I never said anything to him. I knew it. I'm, I'm a failure. Ah, there she goes again, talking to herself. <laughs> Miss Pops. I wonder if you know why your father participated in the kidnapping. No, I have no idea. Your father died while he was trying to stop Lance. Which means that from the beginning he had no interest in being in the stage self-abduction. Wait, then why did he... I believe it was because of your presence, Miss Pops. Me? Lance realized that the two of you were related. Which is why he used you as a hostage to coerce Mr. Devaray into cooperating. Father, as a felon, he could not tell you. He could not tell you of his real relation to you. However, as of the Amano family butler, at the very least, he was able to watch over you. It was all he could do, but that was the shape of his overflowing love for you. Hmm? Go on, speak your mind. I, I, I am. That is. But thank you very much. You're welcome. Although there is no need to thank me. Actually, there's a ton of need to thank me. I did this whole thing myself. 
Oh, no, Lauren. Stop. I mean, this man's so much older than you. Oh. Now she's hitting on Edgeworth. He, he looks like you've completely stolen her away, Mr. Edgeworth. Way to go, sir. Your technique is way beyond the, the level of the great thief. What are you going on about now? Wow, you're deducing... <laughs> Your deducing skills may be sound, but you have no street smarts. That's Mr. Edward for you. Yeah, I mean, he still hasn't figured out who I am at all. If you haven't remembered in all this time, I guess I'm just going to have to say it. This isn't the first time we met, you know. What do you mean, pal? Mr. Edward, how do you know this girl? Hmm, <laughs> looks like you totally forgot me too, Gummy. Gummy? Oh, what? Here, maybe this will jog your memories. I promise I'll return this to you one day, remember? That's... Is that a cravat? Is that like his fourth layer of cravat? That single piece of cloth took me back far into my past. To that fateful day, seven years ago, when I first met the... then-child K. And Detective Gumshoe... Oh, I can't... Are we gonna play this case? Please tell me we're gonna play this case. I wanna play it right now. No, 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 don't go away, no, I want to know. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited. That was so much fun. Like, this game, has, it does a very good job of hyping me up. And it's that's refreshing coming from Apollo, where the only cases I was truly excited to finish or even start were the first and last cases because those cases were really, really good. And, like, the premises of them were, I wouldn't say interesting. Well, no, I'd say very interesting. And they were very experimental and kind. But thank you guys for watching. I had a ton of fun recording this episode. And I can't wait for the next case. Like, meeting Gumshoe and Kay as a child sounds amazing. Um, thank you for all your support. Uh, thank you for the kind messages last episode once again. And I hope to see you on the next episode of Edgeworth Investigations. If you like the video, please leave a like. And if you want to become a member of the Dust Brigade, just push subscribe. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Riding out.